to see the farmer was the last of a dying breed. Living off the land and taking what he needs. Don't see much for the future when a family can't survive. I'd hate to say the farmer was the last of his kind. I remember one really cold February day in 1986. I was driving back from an assignment out in the state. I was just looking at farms. As I passed the farmhouses, I, I realized that inside there, there were some people that were hurting, struggling to keep their farms, to preserve the way of life that they had had for, for years. A lot of these farms had been passed on by family members. Many of them were century farms. And I realized at that point really how invisible the story was, that we'd been running all these reams of copy and we'd been, everybody had sort of gotten in on this from the very beginning. But uh, it was a story that was yet to resonate because we needed to put a face on it. Just woke up one morning and the farmers all were gone. I made an outline. I took it to the managing editor and asked him if I could have two months off to pursue the story in a way that I thought that we had not done it yet. And he looked at me and said, you know, we've covered this story from pillar to post and I don't think there's more we can do. So the answer is no. At that point, I wasn't going to give up. I knew that there was a grant available which enabled a photographer to take a three-month leave of absence from the newspaper that they worked at to pursue a project that fit the theme, the changing face of America. And I felt what was going on in Iowa at the time fit that theme perfectly. Of course, the registry didn't have to pay my salary during that time, so they were, they were all for having me leave. Don't see much for the future when a family I'd hate to see the farmer was the last of his kind. Don't see much for the future when a family can survive. I'd hate to see.
After the Steffes foreclosure, they really had a challenge ahead of them to try to put their life back together. Uh, they were struggling with keeping the 40-acre farmstead that they lived on, but that was all dependent on whether or not they could pay back some of the loans that they owed. They also still had a dream for their son, Bruce, who wanted to stay on the farm. His way of doing that was to be a tenant farmer for the new landowners that had possess the Steffes farm. Pat and Elmer Steffes had a very difficult transitional period because they had to go from being farmers to something entirely different. Elmer ended up driving a moving van from coast to coast and he had to go to school to learn how to do that. While he was off in truck driving school in Indiana, Pat stayed home and she began writing him love letters every day. She would uh, encourage him. She would tell him how much that she missed him. These are the things that kept him going, her support. Without that, I think he would have fallen apart. This is a guy who six months earlier had tossed a rope up over a barn rafter and was thinking about hanging himself. Now here he was, about to enter a new phase of his life. This is the kind of courage and resiliency that I saw out there. The thing that drew me to Marathon was the fact that there was a sign out in front that said town and country working together. And when I drove into the town, that's not what I found. What I found was an empty main street with boarded up businesses that looked like a modern day ghost town. They would already lost their school. The young people who once lived there had moved on. The people in the town felt like they were on life support. Marathon was looking for a finish line.
you can all go here. Sixty-eight, da 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 nine. Sixty-nine, da 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 nine. Da 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 eight dollar, da nine nine. Seven be here, da nine da 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 here, da two 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 da three da three da four da here, da three da half da here, da four. And half da da half da here, da eight da five five da. Five fifteen, da da seven be six da half da here, da half seven. And seven be eight da here, da eight da eighty. Eighty da here, da nine da eighty. Eighty da here, da nine da About halfway through the project, I started writing down words. You've often heard that phrase, a picture's worth a thousand words. My approach was very simple. I wanted one picture to be worth one word. I wanted each word to link to a single photograph. And when I finished the project, I went back to the list that I'd made. And I wondered if I had accomplished that. I wondered if I'd made a photo that said, frustration. I wondered if I'd made one that said worry. Had I made a photo that said anger? Had I made one that said forgiveness? Had I made one that said pain? Had I made a photo that said joy? Had I made a photo that said unity? Had I made one that said loneliness? Had I made a photo that said depression? Had I made one that said faith? Had I made a photo that said despair? Had I made one that said love? Had I made a photo that said grief? Had I made one that said hope? I was able to match a photo with all of those words. That's when I knew my project was finished.